Welcome to PerformanceTestGurus.com. I'm your host, Renard Vardy. Coming up on PerformanceTestGurus.com, how to call a Java API in a VUGen script. In this episode, I'll show you how to select the correct version of Java. Getting this wrong can result in your script not working. Introduce a simple Java API that we'll be using in this video. You can download the API from my GitHub account. The link is provided below. Set up the VUGen Java scripting environment. Create and run the VUGen script. Please subscribe to performancetestgurus.com by clicking on the subscribe icon. Click on the bell icon to be the first to be notified of new videos like this one. If you like or find this video useful, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below on what you would like to see covered in future videos. I'm currently between contracts and I'm looking for my next big challenge. One of the selection criteria I was responding to triggered this video. It asked me to demonstrate my knowledge of WinSocket protocol. The customer appears to be recreating an API at the WinSocket layer, which is a lot of work. Scripting at the API layer will simplify the scripts, thus reducing the scripting time, increasing script readability and maintainability. Yes, in the past I have yet recommended using WinSocket on one side. It had a very, very simple UDP protocol. However, I've always avoided recreating protocols at the network layer and use the native API, be it a Java API or Windows DLL, to generate load against the application. Selecting the JDK version. Selecting the correct version of Java is very important for a successful VUGen Java script. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look at our version of Java by going to the help menu about HPE virtual user generator and look at our version. Our version is 12.55. Now if we go to what's new in Load Runner 12.55 and have a look at what version of Java it supports. This um, Load Runner 12.55 supports Java 8. So if we go over to the Oracle website, we can download 8. It's very important that we download the 32-bit version of Java as a 64-bit version of Java will not work with Load Runner. Now if we go to the command prompt, we can verify our version of Java that's installed on this computer. So if we go to our command prompt and write Java minus version, we have version 1.8 installed. So we're, we're good to go. The simple Java API. Now let's have a look at the simple server API. We have three files. We have a simple server.java, a simple client.java, and an app.java. These files can be downloaded from my GitHub account. A link is provided in the description below. Simple server.java is a simple server that listens on port 8081, responds to any request with my blog, performancetestgurus.com. Simple client.java is a simple client API. It is a static function that sends a message, returns a string of what's been sent back from the server. It takes in a server address, a port, and a string. We're going to see an example of this in the app.java. App.java instantiates a simple server API and prints out the result. Now let's see the simple server API in action. What we're going to do is that we're going to start the simple server. To start the simple server on a Windows machine, double click on the start server.bat. On a Unix machine, there's a shell script provided. Now we've started the simple server. It's listening on port 8081. We now can run the demo.bat or the demo.sh if you're on a Unix machine. Now what it's done is sent my LinkedIn address, linkedin.com slash in slash Renard dash Vardy. And it's responded with performancetestgurus.com and it's provided the, the date and the time. Set up VUGen Java environment. Now that we understand the Java API and we've got our Java environment, we now go to VUGen and we create a new Java virtual user. So create a new scripting solution, a single protocol, and we're going to get a Java user. From there, we're going to set the runtime settings. So we can go to replay and runtime settings, or we can double click on the navigation here to go to runtime settings. Here, we can get the Java virtual machine. We go and just select a use specified JDK. My JDK is located in the C column, program files, x86 size 32-bit Java, and the JDK version. So I'm just going to go and paste that there. And then I'm going to go and add the class path. Now we need to add the class path 
to the Java file that we're going to be using. In my case, it's at C column, simple server, and it's a simple server jar. As I've mentioned previously, you can download this from my GitHub account. Uh, so the details are in the description below. Create VUGen script. To create the VUGen script, we will go to the actions and have a look at the Java code. So this is the self-generated Java code. This function here is run once when we run the script. So when we repeat the script, the action will run multiple times. It's like the action in your normal VUGen script. This is the end action that will only run once at the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of code into the VUGen script. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to create, so we're going to create a new transaction, our request, where LR underscore start transaction, give it a name. Then we're going to create a new string, which is a return value of our API call. So we're going to create a string and we're going to call it return value. So we're going to enter our API call. In this case, we're going to provide the full package, which is com.performancetestgurus.simpleserver. And then we're going to add in the class, which is simple, simple client. Dot, and we're going to send message, which is our static function. We're now going to provide the function arguments, which is the server, the port, and the message that we're going to send. In our case, it's a local host, it's 8081, and I'm going to send my LinkedIn profile, which is linkedin.com slash in slash Renard slash Vardy. So we'll provide that information. The next step is to log the response value. So we're going to do an LR log request, and this will log it in the pane below. We're going to validate that the message contains performance gurus.com. We're going to use the Java contains function on the string that was returned by the simple server. If it does contain performance test gurus.com, we're going to pass the transaction. If it does not contain performance test gurus.com, then we're going to fail the transaction. Run the VU gen script. We are now going to run the VU gen script we've just created. First, we need to start the server. The server can be started by running the start server bat file that's provided on my GitHub. A link is provided below. Now we are listening on port 8081. We can run our script. To run the script, press replay up here. The script is compiling and it will soon run. So it has compiled with no errors. The output will be provided down here. As you can see, we now have the output. We have, we have printed out the performance test gurus.com is what the server responded with. And we have sent the server my LinkedIn profile. That is how to integrate LoadRunner to a Java API.